the third, he was the son of Hatshepsut. And she went there fighting all the way until they arrived at India. At that time, the trading between North Af uh, East Africa, East Africa, South Asia, and South, Southeastern Asia went on, on a, uh, uh, without any uh, 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 persuasion. So let us deal with a little of this structure. We're going to come down as far as we possible come without dealing with books. When the Africans built or presented his brothers and sisters with the calendar of the sun with 360, 360 days and a quarter, corrected each fifth year. Again, when the African corrected his calendar and built a farmer's calendar with 12 months of 30 days each and one month of five days. Again, we correct that to the Nile Valley Africans as the first people came there from out of the outer world, from not from outer space. Outer world was somebody outside of the continent of can, the continent, and that would be the Hyksos. The first non-African people to come to Africa, and they came in the 13th dynasty, they destroyed the 13th dynasty and started the 14th dynasty in the delta and established the capital of Avris in Egypt. Avris is about 50 miles north of present day old Cairo. After the, after the Persians came, then came the Assyrians, not Syrians, Assyrians. And they came trying to capture, by that time, the Jews. And they were repulsed by the Ethiopians who had been ruling Egypt. After them come, the first, the Persians lower down to the south. And then comes, for the first time, the Europeans come into Egypt, other than a student of the Egyptians, he comes to Egypt as a conqueror. That will bring us Alexander, the son of Philip of Macedonia. You call him Alexander the Great. I don't call him a great because I don't know nothing that he done great. He won a few battles in war. That means he killed some Asians and a few Africans. And you say he is great. I don't know, Catherine the Great killed another bunch of Asians again. Every time somebody, somebody kills some Asian and African people, they're great. But Hitler killed some Europeans and you don't say he's great. It's rather strange. Then after Alexander come to, in 332, he come to Egypt and remained, didn't have nothing in Egypt to go out to uh, Greece to go back to, he decided to remain. And you can see he tried to change everything to suit all the Egyptian religion, tried to make the gods of, Greek, of Greek fit the Egyptian religion, religion, make the Greek religion and the Greek state look like Egypt, tried to copy the buildings. And there we have. Athens. He was followed by the Romans in 47 when they bring in the Roman so-called pharaohs. And we have to have from Augustus Caesar down to Cleopatra the, uh, the, the seventh. Or we could go back to Cleopatra the seventh, the daughter of Ptolemy the twelfth. And we have a bad habit, most of us, is to name things that are not African, African because they sound good. Not that we know it is African by no research or going any place to see or doing anything that validates what we are talking about. And still, Pratchett the seventh, the daughter of Ptolemy the twelfth, we are hearing these days 
is an African. When did she become an African? Her father was Ptolemy the Twelfth, a Greek. Her mother was married to Ptolemy the Twelfth, one of the Greek, uh, the Persians. And she became on the throne. Ptolemy the First was General Sutter, one of the members in Alexander's army. When General Sutter was called to take the throne after Alexander died, he changed his name to Ptolemy the First. And all the boy children born to the, that family was called Ptolemy, one, two, three, four, till, till the fifteenth. And the girls was called Cleopatra, one till ninth. And seventh ended the throne. But nevertheless, we here let people argue with us as to whether or not the Egyptian was black. I asked the question to a person asking me the question, what time are you speaking about? And they generally don't know. They just make the assumption that like you make the assumption. You make the assumption that all Egyptians were black or brown or yellow technicolor. You don't say what period of time. I say the Egyptian until the 13th dynasty was black as the ace of spades. And I make no difference if the light or brown or black brown or whatever. The, they were black. And in those days people didn't make differences in terms of your color. It is only in the 13th dynasty when the Hyksos come and they show the Hyksos in the museum in Cairo as an African people, though they came from what you call the western end of Asia. And they came in. Until that time, the Nubians, the Ethiopians, the, uh, the uh, Tah Tanahitian, uh, the Tamerian, that's, e that's Egypt, all of them, Libyan, uh, all of those states in North Africa, East Africa, Northeast Africa, were Africans that like you and I. It is when the 13th dynasty came in, and it must include up until the 18th dynasty that show us the Hyksos was a people like ourselves who had invaded us and up until they got it in the yard in the museum and in the museum on the first floor the people with the head, the tree head, they got it shown there were the Hyksos. So from the 17th and 18th dynasty you could say then people came in such as the wife of Amenhotep the fourth, otherwise known as Akhenaten. His wife is not an Egyptian. She was brought from Mitanni. That's south of what present day Iraq is. To marry Akhenaten. At least the six children, the six girls she has, the six daughters. One of them married to Tonkanen. They could be said half Asian and half African. Although in those days, I'm speaking about now, people didn't deal with people as, as, as particularly their birth. Whether their father or their mother was from a foreign country. And, and not until you get the coming of the, the, the Greeks in about uh, 1200 BC, can you speak of a European? That's when you, when you go in all the temples and all the tombs to see pictures of drawings of people who were there. Excuse me, you never see a white man. It is important to us today, but it wasn't important to those people then. This will, when you go into the tomb of Ramesses III, that's the 20th dynasty, about uh, 1900. And you go into that tomb, you go downstairs and you see Asians and African pictures shown. When you go into the tomb of Ramesses, uh, you go into the temple of Ramesses and uh, the, 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 the Arabs call it Habinet Habu. When you go there and go into the main hall, you see Africans 
dressed in the war costume fighting for the Pharaoh. Ramses III and he's dressed similarly, looks similarly. But they don't show you that in the movies. That you have to come and take the pictures yourself. And I, there are many men and some women in this place that I have taken to see the see that 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 that, that uh, temple themselves, and they see the color of the people, the dress of the people, and I show them the home of the pharaoh. And there were very few homes left. I even show them the the plush toilet of the pharaoh. But we don't want to know that. We don't want to know that unless some white guy, I don't care if he's a plumber, he's a carpenter, he's an engineer, he's a doctor, he's a lawyer, and a pot washer. Some white man, as long as he lives, and if he's dead, it would be better than ask him just the same because they need his approval. But what, what make Egypt so important? Now Egypt isn't the first country in Africa, but Egypt was lucky. It was lucky to be the first country in the world that built in stone. Other countries were building, but they were building in wood. And wood decayed very rapidly. Or it petrified. And they weren't using petrified wood to build building. And a man by the name of Imhotep, a multi-genius, a man who was a physician, the premier, the grand vizier, a poet, and many other things, decided one day he didn't like the way the tomb of his pharaoh looked. And so he said he has to build a stone that seems to be a material that doesn't perish. And he builds a step pyramid. One mastaba, a mastaba is an Arab word mean bench, but uh, it isn't a bench really. It is a square set down in the earth, a square room set down in the earth, but come out high enough that you can sit on it. So they call it a bench. And he took seven of those, one smaller than the other, so that when you look at it, it looks like a wedding cake, one smaller on top of the other. And you get a step pyramid set in a pyramid form. That became the first pyramid ever built by man and the first stone building ever built by man. He then built a valley temple that was for the worship of the people to worship the Pharaoh before he is carried to another building built near and attaching to the pyramid. That's the embalming temple and those and the pyramid. Those were the three buildings built first, and then he built other buildings pertaining to the temple, and homes and other place for the workmen and so forth that was going to build the temple. And then the custom became for wealthy Egyptians to build their homes of stone. Nowhere else in the world, I'm not going to say Europe, the world. Were there any buildings of this nature other than Europe for hundreds of years? It couldn't be in Europe because Europe didn't exist. The land was there. But there was no country, no continent called Europe. No place called Greece, no place called Rome. That didn't come until 1,000, at least 1,200. Egypt was functioning at least 4,100 years before that. There were no Jews yet. No God named Jehovah. No God named uh, Jesus Christ for, for, and for Christians. No God named Allah for Muslims yet. The Africans had gods. Ra and others. 
By the way, you still use an African God name when you say Amen. You must not know it. You don't think it means so be it. Nonsense. And that's just the beginning. It is 96 pyramids. I just spoke to you about one. But Egypt has 96 pyramids. I live one block from the great, one mile from the great pyramid. The one they call the great pyramid because it's the big. It has 48 stories taken 10 foot from one floor to the other floor. So you get 480 foot tall. 48 stories. And it is one and a half block long. Considering that one block is 200 feet. It is six blocks long, six and a half. So we got 600 times two plus 40 blocks long. Why wide? It's a, square, it's a square. And then you got two stories down into the ground. And you got stairs down and walks with paintings, all kinds of paintings and drawings. Inside the writings in the inside is called the pyramid text and the coffin text. Any of the texts dealing with the death of the Pharaoh and the holy writings of the, of, of the religious books are copied in the inside of the temple. Anything relating to the death of the Pharaoh is called the coffin text. And that's generally in the room where the Pharaoh reposes. And they saw in the 96 pyramids. But in the first pyramid, the body of the Pharaoh goes down 96 feet deep. You imagine today it's a big feat to go down 96 feet. <laughs> But in those days they went down 96 feet because they believed that heaven was down in the ground. And God was down in the ground. Man believed God is everywhere. He made God to suit himself. Man made God to think. God to have a child with a man by himself. I don't know what he was thinking on. That Adam got a child without benefit of Eve. That's a damn fool of a thought. <laughs> Up to now it can't be done. Even a faggot can't get a child with a faggot. And they've been trying for a long time. And now the woman start doing it too. She got herself a, boy, a girlfriend. If he can't do it, she will do it. I don't know how. Both of them could get, a, get each other and they may get something, or at least a jiving or, or something. But then them keep on by themselves. They won't get, have me to deal with. I'm too old for that. <laughs> and let us look. Egypt developed a language. A Medunetia language. They call it God, gods of the deity. Remember they said it language of the gods because these brothers feel that only gods did things like hell God didn't masturbate he had sex that's why they had goddess equally when you deal with Ra Osiris and all these fellows I could deal with Nut goddess Nut goddess uh, uh, Aset goddess for every god you could name I could name a, a goddess for everything he do, I could give you something else she did. And therefore one is as good or bad as the other. Even the gods and goddess were married to each other. Some of them were shocking. <laughs> All gods that didn't say marry and they had children. Marriage is a custom that we give for ourselves. It's a it's a, a social custom in a state. But if you have a child, and I have one, you're married to a woman, and I have one, I don't marry to a woman, there's nothing between your child and mine, it's just been married. 
It's nonsense to say that that woman is less than my woman because you did some stupid thing called a marriage. Her, she had the child the same way, in the same hospital, the same bush, or some place, in a taxi cab or something else. And the child come out the same way. We, men, call down people who have a child and wasn't married. Tell me if it got 10 foot and 8 nose because it wasn't married. And some of them married and can't tell you what the marriage license is. They hide it so that the boy, the next man can't see it, or, or he hide it so that she didn't see it. So the African developed that. They developed writing, they developed homes, they developed mathematics, science. When they went to Greece, by the time Greeks come together, and they went to Greece with, a, with, with all kinds of different things that they had developed, theosophy, philosophy, and so forth, the seven liberal arts, etc., and they developed it, start to develop the grief. The Greeks start to show them. The Greeks then decided they needed to know more and beg the Egyptians to let them come to the Grand Lodge of Luxor to learn, to study. But in the Grand Lodge of Luxor, the men, young men, had to enter at age seven. And at age 47, they were graduated 40 years of study. Which Greek was going to study 40 years when he was 60? He come there when he's 60 to learn and he get about a 5 or 10 years and he was lucky. And then he gave a goblet like he, uh, this fellow of mathematics, um, Pythagoras, gives a goblet, a silver goblet, he tells us just only to learn, but they tell him he could not learn because it was clean. The Europeans were not clean. Not one of them had been circumcised. And now these men, 60 and 70, got to get circumcised. <laughs> they weren't clean, they could study. And so he said it was so, such an awful pain just to get an education, and he called it the mysteries. It's not in mysteries. I hear you calling about mysteries of Egypt. Egypt got no, had no mysteries in the past and they don't have none now. It was mysterious to the Greeks. They didn't know nothing what the Egyptians were teaching. It was mystery to them. And they still call it a, a mystery in Greece today. But anyhow, they come and learn as much as they could and go. And they tell me that Jesus at age 12 come down to Egypt to learn. Who, if he is God, what is coming to Egypt to learn? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we got to straighten out ourselves. All the gods are coming to human to learn. So then human is God, God. I got, I got asked some question, the question, just asking, because you fellows know, I don't know. <laughs> And there is where we see the Egyptians present their lodges. They present the Masonic Lodge. Not Masonic Temple. It's because the men work in stone. They build out of stone and so they created professions in stone. The men who that kept the corner, the line men, the corner men, and they got degrees and different titles. And it was necessary to make in the lodge men of different degree. A degree is uh, like a university where you get a degree today. And they had these different ways in which to treat their men. But they weren't men of secret. It's just that if you weren't a mason, you couldn't get a degree. You're not a mason for mason. It was not for carpenters. And therefore, men had gradation based upon their profession. They built out of that, for instance, the temple of Northern uh, Waset, the temple, temple of Northern Warit. And Warit is the biggest temple to worship in the world. Bigger than Mecca. Mecca is a tiny little thing. When you're talking about Mecca and you're talking about Warit, 
you are not talking about the same thing. Warit, you could take St. John's Cathedral in uh, New York City, St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City, take the Vatican in Rome, and take the, the English uh, cathedrals in John and in England. Put them all together, and you can put all, any one of you, you have, some of you here have been with me, and see in that temple, you can go for the whole day and can't walk from one wall to the other wall. You got the lake in there. You got other temples in there. You could in drive the Indy 500 and got room to walk. And yet, even the cracker in the White House is going to tell me that he civilized me. <laughs> that Europeans civilized us. Missionary comes to, uh, to Africa, come there and see the old ruins and come back and say the same darn nonsense. I remember when I was a little boy, they used to come and say, pose for us with this and that. And we posed, they were paying the stupid money and we were getting the money. So why shouldn't we pose? We do anything they want except something that's going to hurt us. And do all kinds of different things and they come back with an arrogant self. And Many of us stood there, stood here, being black. They come back and tell us this and we forget that we were slaves dressed up in big uniforms. We lost our slavishness. We became slaves dressed up, living in beautiful homes, riding in boats and cars, but still slaves in the mind. And we felt that we were better than Africans and so we too start coming as missionaries. What mission were you bringing? We too come and we're screwing around on our wives. We too come and we are beating our wives in the brains. We are shooting each other's. We were doing all these kinds of things and we come in to our brothers and sisters to tell us how to be good. And forget the word stable, but obey your master. But it's not bad. We could go to Washington and see the statue for Washington. And we notice it looked like a obelisk. And the obelisk been here from the time of Gaddis had subsumed. 4,500 B.C. How long have the obelisk that they got there in Washington been there for George Washington? And we forget. He's the father of our country, you say. You forget his sole slave and the day of inauguration to Barbados in the Caribbeans. And you talking some nonsense about he's our father. He's the man you should shoot first. <laughs> Then we would have at least know to deal with presidents like him and Jefferson and all the others that rape our women. Ask Salim how it was getting children for Jefferson when he could only come down in the yard at night and go back up to his white mistress in the night. We are supposed to be proud of that. We are to be men like our good professor who speaks about the new language the people are talking about. I said new language because it been here quite a while. You were always speaking broken English like me. I could, sp I could speak broken English and feel as good as good English and they know so just damn thing. English is made up of all the Scandinavian language, it got French in it, and it got Latin in it. All the dirt of the world <laughs> goes to England. England had no country. Character when character course went to England and saw the British he said they were too dumb to be able to be slaves. Even slaves he couldn't make of them jackasses. 
And the Queen of England is now saying about her col colonials, the Queen of England, she's the biggest whore in town. <laughs> she is a whore, a thief, and everything else. She made Morgan, her mother, make Morgan, her grandmother, all of them, make Morgan the thief, the pirate that went to Jamaica and the West Indies. All the pirates down there, she made them governors of Jamaica and took their money. Now how could she talk about people with etiquette? And uh, the, the, the girl that married to her son, her grandson, the uh, little boy that, that running around sampling all the women he can, uh, Ferguson or somebody else, they make her Lady Ferguson, came to Harlem Hospital. She's not a lady. <laughs> what is lady about this whore? You scared to talk about people, what they are. She's been whoring all over London. <laughs> Even the guy in the taxi said, the taxi driver said, he had some too. <laughs> and you, you're scared and talking about Lady, Lady Ferguson. She's not a lady, she's a whore coming whore. <laughs> Let's tell you, you call your own sister whore. You call your sister bitches, you call them by all a name like that. But you can't call a white woman a bitch. A man got to understand when we are talking about the slave. When you make a slave, you can take a technician of any sort, a professional of any sort, and reduce him to less than that. Reduce him to a moron. You can beat him down, and that's what's happened to us. They beat us down where we lost our origin. We lost and we became senile. Senile to the extent that we know, know who we are. Some of us argue that we are chocolate coated flavor brown. Some, some of us ask, you look at me, I'm only black, but I'm not black. <laughs> some of us got black like the ace of spades with blonde head. We look at blonde head. Leave our pretty gray hair when it's, you see the old sister fasting looking so sweet or with her gray hair and, I, and I'm saying, Jam, boy, I could run my finger through them gray hair, feeling good. <laughs> and she go and put some gold dust in that thing. And I can have jackasses, I heard one last night. They take a professor of economics to talk and correct the professors of African history and he's saying I can understand those fellows because they should know that we are Americans a jackass that tell you get crazy if the slaves some slaves get totally crazy <laughs> and only his father his boss can talk about it because we named Swivel Gabble and Gabble Swivel and all the things like that and the Jew, Jewish slaves and Christian slaves are whites. We forget, don't take Jamaica. Every slave practically in Jamaica is a Jew. Go to Jamaica and hear the names that they got and tell you the stories about the warfare that they've had down there. Go to Jamaica and hear them tell you about the maroons that the British gave 500 uh, acres up in the hill and speak with the maroons and speak with the Rastas. Don't talk Rasta at these fellows just run in here the stink and the wound take, take, take her back. Rastas take back. Uh, I, I know Rastas own radio station and so forth. Go to them. Uh, Iwi, the station is called Iwi. I, up, up in uh, 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 the place past Montego, Montego Bay, the largest city past there. Uh, and, 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 and they got all the people who work there, Rastas. And let them tell you. Let them show you. Let them be with you and be with them. Be at Minnie's place up there and hear them talk. The Rastas who were, were members of parliament, Rastas who are professors at the university, Rastas, uh, all of them. I met with so forth. I met when, when I went to the University of the West Indies in Jamaica. 
uh, and let me tell you, they got history, beautiful history, uh, 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 and Port Royal and so forth, and you, you get some history to talk about. Black people have made history. Go down to the Caribbean, further down in the Caribbean. Go to the, what is called the United States Virgin Islands, St. Croix. It was then owned by the Dane. Go and see the result of the fire burn. When there was a lady, Queen Mary Buttonbelly and Ellen Fireball, lead the brothers to break away from slavery and fight against the masses until from Christian, from Fezestead all the way to Christian Stead. And the, when they run short of ammunition, they couldn't get any new ammunition. And then three nations come to fight against them and they had to surrender because they didn't have uh, any more ammunition. Just look at the black woman in all of these fights. All the black woman was there and she lead, led some of them. And yet we talking dumb nonsense about the black woman isn't this, the black woman is that, beat her up all over her head, she's pregnant, we kick her in her guts and all those kinds of things. We've got to stop that nastiness, that bulliness. There's nothing to bully about a man for kicking a woman in her stomach or for hitting her. You hit your little child going to school and there's a time in which you stop hitting the girl so you don't hurt her. There's a time she becomes a woman and you don't hit her because you may hurt her. And we don't learn. We feel big. We are doing, we are bad. We are heroes. And then mad because the woman press her here. But who the hell is she pressing her here for? A jackass like you. <laughs> she pressing her here to please you. She believes that you want because all the white women can't walk because you dump behind them behind. Don't let them, like O.J. Simpson, he got what he deserved. It's about time, man. It, 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 the game for playing is, is over. We are beautiful Africans that were made slaves. And the slave mentality is not only to say, boss, please do this for me. The slave mentality is not only to beg, it is to stay begging. But the African mentality is to get my woman and me and my woman, we continue to build for ourselves. The independent mentality to look at your black child and be proud of the black child. And to feed not only your black child, but to feed others. You got a, a good income coming and you see a black child could do well. Only will need some support. Ask the mother if the mother's around, if not around, adopt it. Ask the mother, can I help you with the child? You don't have to groot her. You don't have to dig into her just to help her child. Because a mother will let you get her body if you do it in right. And it is nothing wrong for her to give her body to a man who helped her child because that is what she got. That is the only thing she's got. And it's holy and sacred, and she should be able to give it to who she wants. The other day a man asked me, I heard you speaking the other day, you don't believe in God. I said, which God you're talking about? He said in the Bible, I said, which Bible you're talking about? He said the Bible, I said, which Bible are you speaking about? You're not speaking about what James. James killed his mother over woman. <laughs> so you're not speaking about that one to me. You're not speaking the one by the Jews. The Jews of Europe who didn't think of the Jews in India, the Kashim Jews, who didn't think of the Jews in Ethiopia, the ones they call the Parasha, the better Israel, 9,000 of them the other day went back to Israel. You're not talking, we're talking about white people. Talk about Jews. You're not thinking about the Muslims, they just start a Bible the other day with Muhammad, and he's supposed to be, he's supposed to get up on a carpet and flew to Mecca on a carpet. I am a jackass to think so. <laughs> are those, are those who speak about, my God is my woman.
She feeds me. She clothes me. She comes to my side when I'm ill. She constantly urged me on. When I didn't have jobs, got fired for saying the wrong thing they said at the university. She went to work, just had a child. She supported my child, supported my child before with other wives. She take them, raise all my children. What the hell is a God but that? I know a lot of you mad about that. Because I'm not saying, my God is this what I've never seen? My God is somewhere else up in the hell? I asked you not been all the way up there and say God yet. <laughs> I mean, don't be mad with me. I, I'm not mad because you believe in God. No, don't get me wrong. Go on, but don't mess with me with mine. <laughs> Because I can make my God produce and you only believe your God is a ghost. Is a nothing walking around, ghosting all the time. You can't see the ghost. I can show you my God anytime you want. <laughs> so we think of this. Think of the Africans in Egypt and Ethiopia and so forth making medicine, making cosmetics, making the first medical thing that we hear of is the Everest Papyrus. When they were making a, 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 a suppository to insert in the vagina uh, during the time of Hatshepsut. Hatshepsut being the only woman, the only woman up to today was called a queen king. The only woman that ruled a nation as a king, queen king. She said she was a virgin long before Mary. She was born in 1480 BC, 1480 years before Mary. And she said, God Kunum and God uh, Ator was her mother and father. And she ruled on that basis, they had to accept her as the queen king. There have never been another queen queen since. Isis, uh, the one you call Isis, I said become pregnant for Har uh, 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 Asaru, Osiris, when he's dead. Because his brother said Typhon had kid, cut him up into 14 pieces and threw it in the Nile. And one piece, the, the Nile catfish ate. Nubians don't eat it up to now. I mean, we eat pork chop, we eat all kind of chops. But not Nile catfish. Because they eat the penis of Osiris. And then she went to God, God Ra, and appealed for Osiris, who had lost his manhood. He had no penis. And they gave him back his penis, and the penis was laying horizontal, and she went to God, raised it for me, and God put his penis perpendicular. And she flew around. The penis sat and ate, and became pregnant. Didn't touch her virginity. Her hymen remained. And she got Horus. 4,100 years before Mary got Jesus. And they're telling me about first virginity. You crazy or something? I could name it 15 virgins. Egypt had, Egypt had 42 towns. And each town had a triad. A triad is similar to your triad. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And Joseph didn't get nothing but the tree that they got. <laughs> and the one that's shown in the temple at Karnak, when you go down in the yard, ask anybody who's been there with me, I show them. They cut off the head of the male and the female. I left the little child, the son, in the middle, as similar to the crucifix. That's what the Christian did when they come in and took over the temple. The temple of uh, 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 oh, uh, uh, father, he was Thutmose the third. She married her brother symbolically, he was Thutmose the second. And you could go to the temple of Hatshepsut in the va valley next to the Valley of Kings and see it, the first two story building in the world. Two stories. And go and see. 
how they try to copy buildings. Go to Rome to see how they tried to, to copy the colors, the Colosseum to make it look like the, the, the Great Northern Temple. Go and see. They make a wall to make a, 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 a double wall. They had to build two walls and pour sand in it. The Egyptian and the Nubian built solid walls. They built columns. A column, you could take the tallest man here, take six of those men and span in so. Not enough to span one column. And there's 134 of those columns in one room called Hippostyle Hall. And that, they don't tell you nothing about that. Nothing at all. And not a bit of mortar in the misery. This, the, 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 and there is no brick in the step pyramid made of no material. And all the time the Jews build the pyramid. Where? There's 44 of those pyramids in Sudan. The Jews build them too. The pyramids in South America, uh, uh, not South uh, Central America, the Jews build them too. It's disgusting. Every time we have to hear, that's why you see, I was brought up in the religion, but I leave it. It's, it's as bad as yours, it's as bad as the Muslim, and, and one of us telling the other one. A Jew telling a Christian, a Christian Jew, a, a Mohammedan, and we tell each other, my God is older, younger, all kind of damn nonsense. We have to learn to find a way to communicate with each other without hating each other. We have a, if you want to come to church, come. If you want to go to mosque, go. If you want to go to synagogues, go. And say bye bye. My wife is a Roman Catholic. She's been a Roman Catholic before I married her. As a matter of fact, she was a, a nun in the church. Don't get me wrong, she's not. I didn't take out the church. She was, she came out the church and Mother Superior tried to push her up her hand and her dress one night and she walked out the church and came home. I knew her before she went in there, was no a girl. I, I had some years in, I spent uh, age six to 23 in Puerto my mother's home. And uh, I know Gertrude when she was in school, uh, around sixth grade, because then she troubled me as a, as a little boy, I was small too. And I told her I'm gonna get hold of her one of these days. <laughs> and she went in that, in that thing for about 20 odd years and came out and I, I ran into her one day. I, uh, Clark's, Clark's Men's Store, uh, we used to be in Butch, the um, butchers the jewelry place and I ran into her and she had on the regular clothes she had got out the habit and I said are you, are you got your English? and she said so what? <laughs> so I said nothing I just want to say hello I'm Joseph Ben Yeka and she said you can't be Julia's boy I said if I'm not Julia's boy I'm something she says what are you doing? I says well I'm them here she says I, I, I'm not in church no more I said then she said, no, I'm married to God. I said, which one? Jesus? <laughs> I got to ask. I got to ask because I didn't, I, I forgot that she was a Catholic. And uh, she, she said she's married to God. I got to find out if it's Jesus, Muhammad, or, or who? You, you don't know, know just because she tells God, you can't assume it's one or the other. And... Uh, she said, she was living with her uncle and aunt, and I said, well, can I come up? They said, you could come, but uh, all we have to use a soda, we don't drink. I said, I don't drink alcohol either. And she said, so I went up, and I, I went and found that her aunt didn't have a man, and uh, she had never had a man. And, and Gertrude didn't have a man, had never had a man. And I said, damn, this house full up of people ain't got no man. <laughs> and and I said, and I find I can't talk to God to good. And then I tell her, I got a little lot of children, you like them. And she liked children, and I encouraged her to come up where I was living. And uh, she liked my big daughter. And I told my daughter I wanted to marry her she, to be really nice to her. So my daughter was nice to her and helped me to hook her. 
And um, I tried to get a little piece and she said, uh-uh. I only God can mess with me. You got to, I, I, I think I, I'm not getting married to nobody. I said, well, be nice, not if it's not for me, to, for the children, they need a mother, and I need a good Christian mother. I, I, I became Christian overnight. So I talk up, I talk up the marriage and thing, and went to the, to the priest, the priest said, he couldn't marry because I live in sin and I didn't come to God. That, then I went to some places, and so I decided I would marry her in her uncle's house, and we get the clerk of the court to come up to us. Now that costs a good deal of money, and the clerk called her friends, that girlfriend, and we had a nice little wedding, and she was shaking and thing, because she was going to get what God needed to give her all them years. <laughs> So, we got married and so forth, and, and then we got children, she raised, raised the, other, the children, the other children that had, she raised them, and uh, we adopted two children since I married to her. She got two of my 20 children, and uh, Kwame is, is 34, and the girl is 42, he's 20 to 43. Uh, we, we have done very good and I respect her. Her, her uncle is dead but her, her aunt is 94 and uh, she's living and we see each other quite often. Uh, but to, to think of us now, to speak of ourselves in another aspect, in how we look at ourselves. You say, you talk to a black man about another black man and is he he all right no he never a black man that he knows that's married to a black woman have a black family that is respectable that is good it's always he he always never have a good word we never have a good word for a black family we got the white man mr this mr turtle mr this mr. it's always something good about the white man even in the sports is the one thing that the black man exhibit himself everywhere. No other way because he can't get a chance hardly. When he barely get a chance he can't exhibit himself. He got too much trouble living in, in the suburb. He's trying to get white like Michael Jackson. But he'll never make it. I want to see the gorilla that Michael got. And we have to realize that in all of this we have to establish to each other. I don't give a damn if Carter don't like me. I don't care. I don't care if Carter wife, his daughter, don't like me. I care if you like me. If you like me for this, for that, or for the other, makes a difference to me. When I come here, I don't want to eat in the Renaissance. I don't want to eat in the, in the, in the high name place. I went this morning, I eat to a restaurant, and had me some pork. I know you all got mad. A nice some pork patty. And I had, um, uh, to help me, man. I had two sisters were serving their food. Man, I was so sorry that I, in temporary retirement. <laughs> but I'll get back, who knows. <laughs> and I, I, I noticed, the, and the sister looked so good. The one sister, the tall sister. I mean, uh, it's just, uh, man, that was like, 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 thing <laughs> uh, And you see, I behave myself like a nice gentleman and so forth. And uh, it was, you could see the place that needs some, some work, some money to do, but the food was good. It, it, it make you feel comfortable. 
that uh, when you eat it, you don't want to get up and go. You feel you could have another serving. And, uh, but you know, you, you, your stomach isn't big enough. And that's the one thing your stomach got to have it, a closing down, don't give you a chance to get some more food. <laughs> now, I heard there going to be a question and answer period. But we move from here. It is not until Homer that the European got into the picture. We had built, we had established a language, we had done all these different things before that period of time. We had been with each other all the way down to what is called today Central East Africa. We have built along the line, we have seen Makeda, we have been all over. When we talk about the East African, the, the West African empires, Gali, Ghana, Man, Mali, and Shanghai, we have been there and we have been building. The Arabs come and meet, came and meet us in Kumbisela and Sela. That's both the, uh, the, the religious capital and the commercial capital of Gali. We had established the trade, business trade between salt uh, uh, and gold. Gold, gold and, and the West Coast, salt in North Africa. We had traded as they come, as the Greeks and the Romans come, we traded, bring them, accept him as Flacos. When he was writing his report, we had done this. We had given a home to, 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 to the, the queen of, um, uh, oh, they call her, in this place they call her by a different name that, that what we call her and the name now I'm trying to think. When she come to North Africa looking for to, to Egypt, looking at home and the Egyptian told her she could stay there and she continue over and we establish the nations, various nations of Southwest, uh, uh, Northwest Africa. We as established St. Augustine. You Christians here call, talk about St. Augustine. You forgot he was born in North Africa, black as tar, and he went to school in North Africa. He went to school and there becomes a talent. At age 19, he was speaking already all the great things of the teachings of this world. And then he was asked by Ambrose to come to Italy to teach. And he went at 29, he went to Italy to teach, and Ambrose, the greatest scholar in Europe, learned from him and quickly ran. When he asked Ambrose, where you got it from? He said, I got it from a place called Egypt. Ambrose picked up his suitcase and he was off to Egypt, where he learned and come back to teach in, in, in the uh, Augustan mother Monica came and died. Dropped down on the, on, on the pair and died when she see her son. Augustine went back, said the Lord is punishing him, and he got to go back and went back to North Africa and established a monastery and wrote the book called The Confessions of Augustine. He wrote many books, many books that have come the foundation of Roman Catholicism and others. And the language of the Catholic Church was formed by an African. Latin was the language of the African that established the language of the church. St. Cyprian was a third member. St. Cyprian became the philosopher of the Roman Catholic Church. And then there start to be three popes of the Roman Church and three emperors like Honorius. The last one being Septimus Severus. But no one speaks of it. No one says anything in, about the Catholic Church having brown bishop, black bishop, black priest, black po popes. Nothing. Unless you know, you will never find out from their teachings. And they got all kind of schools in the black neighborhood. They're no different than the, the government. They don't teach it. And when you teach it, you got some stupid jackass who got a chance to be with some white man, and he got to speak what, and the white man says, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him what I tell you, jackass you. <laughs> and so we fight each other, constantly fighting each other, 
and the white man benefiting from, from the failure of each of us. We don't sit down and talk. You don't sit down and find what we got. And we could give him the source. As if he could go. He could go to Egypt himself. He don't have to go with me. He could go to any place and see the things I see and saw. And go to the, to the museums all over the world. And he would see what came from Egypt. And he would see who they represent. But no. He can put money for everything. Go to the Caribbean to dance. Go everything, go to Canada to dance and to Europe to talk about what a time he had in France. <laughs> well, he is a black jackass to watch the white people. <laughs> and he can go to West Africa, any part of Africa, and he will see his own, see the people struggle and understand what colonial was. And when he sees the ruins, he asks, what is this, is this ruin? Then he would know what his ancestors once did. At home in Africa, they're just as stupid asses like anybody else. They love the white man. You go to Ghana, they got Jesus for Jesus' coat. Fort's name, Jesus, they love it. And all of those forts were built by white men to enslave black men. And we smell them and we look at the stains and we watch it and we come back and beat up our women when we men. That is what we have had. And I beg that it's humanly possible that I have to stop and give you a chance to ask questions. But I want to say, I deliver this letter, this letter with respect to the black woman. Thank you. Good up, good up. Joseph Ben Yakana. Joseph Ben Yakana. Joseph Ben Yakana.